today, since I've gotten a hold of one, I'm going to try and test the effectiveness of a 300 blackout pistol with the Barnes 110 grain TAC TX ammunition designed for it as a viable option for deer hunting here in Florida. Stay tuned. So I have the rifle roughly zero two inches high at 100 yards. I'm just firing from a field position. It's not very precise. Now I'm going to try and connect with a gallon milk jug at 200 yards with the Barnes 100 TAC X. Uh, see what it does, see what kind of hydraulic shock we get, what kind of expansion we get. And I'm going to try and capture it on video for you. And hopefully that will help us with uh, determining whether or not this is a viable hunting. This is going to be the first attempt. 300 blackout, 110 grain Barnes TAC X. 200 yards, we're going to try and put it into a one gallon milk jug. Again, 200 yards, 100 yards. 12 to 15 miles per hour. And a little more now, right to left crosswind. We'll be able to shoot position and see how we do. First, let's talk about the 200 yard targets that we shot. We set up one light skin, uh, one gallon sweet tea jug filled with water with a thicker skinned antifreeze jug behind it. The idea was to catch the size of the expansion on the second jug. Um, the 200 yard test didn't start out as planned. The first two shots I fired were hits. But I was compensating for the heavy crosswind. Um, I didn't need to, it appears. The bullet was only drifting about a half an inch to an inch off of course. And the bullets hit where I was aiming on the right side of the bottle with a right to left, right, right to left crosswind. But as you can see, both bullets showed really good expansion and good shock value at that distance, even with the light hits they experienced. On the third shot, I aimed center mass. Um, that's about where I hit, about an inch. You can see about an inch low and an inch left of where I was aiming. And it completely ruptured and destroyed the initial bottle here, as you can see. It put fractures and tears all throughout, caused a lot of damage, which is good. And the second bottle, as we expected, caught the expansion. You can see here, the bullet expanded quite a bit before it went into the second jug. And you can see the size of the expansion where it came out the back as well. I would not hesitate to use the 100 Tac X round of the 300 Blackout to shoot a deer at 200 yards. It appears that it would it would perform perfectly terminally.
Next, we shot the same, same two bottles at 300 yards. And this time I, I did compensate for wind slightly, but not as much as I did the first time. I was expecting about 22 to 23 inches of drop. What I did, what I experienced was more like 26. It was a first round hit. The bullet entered the bottle low and to the right. Probably should have compensated for wind just a little more. But again, it showed lots of lots of shock and it expanded well and tore the bottle up real bad, causing lots of fracturing, as you can see. And on the second bottle, again, as expected, it showed the expansion. And now, not quite as much, but still about six-tenths of an inch of expansion is showing there. And it lost a lot of energy and came out the back a clean hole. Again, about six-tenths of an inch to three-quarters of an inch expansion. And that, again, was with the 300 Blackout 110 grain TAC TX Barnes bullet. It's a bullet that was designed specifically for the 300 Blackout by Barnes. They claim out of a 9 inch barrel that you will get 60 caliber expansion and 24 inches of penetration on ballistic gelatin. With such a a low velocity anemic round, I didn't believe it at first, but my test shows 300 yards, that's six tenths of an inch at least expansion going through one bottle of water at 300 yards. Um, as far as accuracy, I can't complain with a three for three hits at 200 on a gallon jug and a first round hit at 300 from a field position not using rest, not using sandbags, no bench. Just sitting in the back of my truck, squatted down on a knee. Uh, it worked fantastic. This is a AR-15 handgun. For those of you that are not familiar, this is called a SIGTAC brace. It is not a stock. It is not a shoulder stock. It is not intended to be one. It is designed as a forearm stabilizer on this AR pistol. It is not an SBR. But back to the weapon itself. It is a factory hardened arms 300 blackout upper 10.5 inches. Uh, very affordable. One of the cheapest uppers you can get. Accuracy was great. Function was 100%. And I have it mated to a polymer 80 lower. It's an 80% lower that you finish yourself. You can you can possess it, you cannot sell it. Um, it's rather cheap. I bought this one, I think, for $40. Added my parts to it. And again, it functions great. It's very light, very durable. Uh, wasn't very hard to mill out. Just took a little, little bit of hand tool knowledge. You got an aftermarket grip, um, some cheap. Uh, backup sights and a Millet DMS-1 1 to 4 power scope. It's a dot reticle with optional illumination. I didn't use it. It's a 1 MOA dot surrounded by a circle. It's a 1 to 4 power 24 objective 30 millimeter M2. This is about as cheap as you can get to build a 300 blackout pistol and it performed flawless. It shoots MOA at 100 yards. It obviously is capable to 300 yards for hunting. Um, functions 100%. Doesn't weigh very much. Uh, I have no complaints. And that's the weapon we use for this test.